Do you wish you were more creative and just had those amazing ideas that you came up with to the problems that you're facing? I'm going to give you a mental thinking model that is going to instantly tap you back into your creativity. Because here's the thing, most of us, if you've gone through traditional schooling, essentially we've been trained out of being creative. But with this mental thinking model, you'll be right back there. And you'll see the creative wheels start turning and new solutions and ideas to any problem in your life immediately start coming forth. When you're doing this creative thinking model, similar to brainstorming, let yourself put all the ideas down on the table, all the ideas down on paper. This is essential. When I have a creative problem solved, I always start with paper and pencils, markers, some colors, all the colors, as many as you can work with. A mental model is the structure, the framework that you use to begin thinking about this creative problem that you have in front of you. Anything that you're facing in your daily life, how do you make more time for the things that you really love? How do you find a potential love partner? Any of these problems, you can start using the mental model that I'm going to give to you right now to start engaging with it and coming up with so many more answers. For the sake of those of you who are looking for love, we are going to use this as our problem today. The method that you're learning today is called SCAMPER. This is an acronym and I'm going to break down every single letter and show you how you use each letter for exploding this problem and starting to see 8, 10, 20 times more solutions to this problem than you even conceived it before. You're going to blow your mind with your own creativity. The S in Scamper stands for substitute. If I'm working on, I have, I want to find love. That's the problem. That's the thing you're thinking. You want to find love. You want to find a partner. When I think substitute, I'm going to take notes while I'm telling you this. I think a few things. One, I think, is there a love substitute? Well, immediately I think of chocolate. <laughs> is an animal a love substitute? So is there a pet? Can you go somewhere and get a massage or hire a cuddle buddy and give yourself that love feeling? So these are four ways right off the top of my head. I'm substituting. So the problem isn't find a love partner. It's substitute in someone being a love partner. Do you know how many rom-com books are written where someone asks someone else to pretend to be their fake boyfriend or girlfriend for a family event? And if you've read these books, you know those people end up falling in love. You can shout out the movies too. I know it's in movies. I can't remember which ones. That's the S. Next, combine. Okay, combine. I haven't been looking for love for a while, so I'm, I'm having to stretch myself. But this is good because if you're trying to be creative, you're stretching yourself too. Combine. What I think of immediately is can you combine groups of people that you know and have them overlap? Can you hang out with couples? See, like, do those couples know other people? Or think, oh, you're so fun. You're like so-and-so. Hey, did she know so-and-so that I work with? Wait, you don't know them? Let me introduce you to. That's one thing of combining. Another thing, which started coming up with the pet one for me and the last one, is can you combine two things that you like to do to have a third area? So let's say you get a pet and you're really into pets. How do you combine your love of pets, we'll say dogs, with something else that matters to you, like volunteering, like community work? Oh, wait a minute. Now you're going to go to down to the Greenville Humane Society and go volunteer and see if they need any help. Oh, it just so happens there's a very handsome person who works at the Greenville Humane Society. Oh, hello, handsome person. Here I am. Okay, does it always work out like this? No but we're getting the gears rolling. We're only in the second letter of this mental model that we're working through. Uh, I'm gonna write down pet volunteering at Humane Society. The A in scamper is adapt. For someone looking for love, my immediate thoughts that I come up with that are adapt. Are there areas of other areas of life that you can adapt the situation to make it feel more loving? When I was looking for my partner, and I wasn't meeting a love interest. I decided to pour myself into my work a little bit more to find ways of expanding my own identity and feeling really fulfilled and really appreciated in that way. 
and I was one of the most well-loved teachers. And so I adapted my environment to meet my needs of wanting love. I'm gonna move on to the M because there's three parts to the M in Scamper. There's modify, maximize, or minimize. Modify, maximize, minimize. Again, anytime you have a creative problem, you might have to stretch. You might have to think outside of the box. So what if you start minimizing that this is a big deal? And you start thinking, well, this is just one day in my life that I'm single looking for love. This is just one month in my life. This is just one year of my life. If I minimize the time and think in the grand scheme of my life, this is such a small piece. What does that do to your perspective of it? If this is a small problem, then perhaps you stop seeing it as a problem and you've minimized the way in which, oh, my time being single will be less than my time being with a partner, if, if you're looking for a life partner. So then you think, this, this is a real perspective, I thought. Once I truly believed, oh, I am destined to find my love match no matter what, I thought, I better start doing all the things I know I wanna do that he might not wanna do. Because if we're hanging out all the time, and he doesn't want to go travel to this country or do this activity. I want to do it now. I started living my life with so much carpe diem enthusiasm. It was wild. Ironically, I also met my husband, I think three months after that. And so I did not have that much time at all to maximize my time that I had and minimize the time that I felt, oh, I'm so sad. I'm single. I wasn't really that sad. Um, modify, maximize. So here's the thing about maximizing. Let's say the problem is a big problem, making it bigger, 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 bigger. If this problem is so important and so big and it's impacting every day of your life, you need to hire a matchmaker. And you know what? Why don't you go see what they charge? Why don't you go interview the matchmaker? Why don't you go see is that even an option? Now, you might also be thinking, I don't have 500, 1,000, whatever to pay a matchmaker, or I don't wanna to go to a dating coach or whatever. Great, but you at least put the idea on paper and opened up your mind to see other possibilities. You start to see, oh, there's so many more things you can do rather than just being like, oh gosh, I just wanna meet this love interest and I'm not finding them. P, put to other use. I don't have a thing right now for love interest, so I'm gonna come back to this so I can and, and get into everything else. The last one is reverse or rearrange. Reverse, what immediately comes to mind is, what is the anti-dating ad you would make for yourself? How can you totally convince everyone you know, do not date me? 